the Sheliak fleet had just one chance to dominate mankind before their imminent destruction. They miscalculated that chance to the last breath. The old veteran recounted the first contact between mankind and the war-hungry Sheliak, detailing humanity's initial foray into deep space. Jacob Allen, a wizened and battle-scarred spacer, gestured at star maps and ship diagrams with his prosthetic left arm and began weaving his tail to wide-eyed cadets. Mankind had taken its first steps off old Terra and built homes in a dozen systems. We planted our feet on alien dirt, made friends with some races who liked our pluck, but our expansion caught the attention of the Sheliak, nasty-scaled predators who saw us as meat. The cadets glanced between each other nervously, hanging on to each of Jacob's grim words. The year was 2187. Sheliak warships appeared like spectres above Earth's skies, Millions of tons of sinister alloy blotted out the sun, and they hailed us with an ultimatum. Surrender into slavery or burn. Jacob paused a moment to let the severity of that threat sink in. The entire soul system blockaded, and mankind's birthplace held hostage under massive railguns. The Sheliak expected us to roll over, submit, give them the resources and labor of countless human worlds, but there's one thing predators throughout the galaxy have learned. As Jacob leaned forward, the cadets followed suit, their eyes wide as saucers and their jaws clenched. The veteran finished. When you provoke humanity's wrath, you invite your own demise, because we don't bow to conquerors. We make them regret setting foot on our orb. The cadets leaned forward, enthralled by the tale. Jacob relived the memories in his mind, the fear and adrenaline of those fateful hours. So Corvus gave the order. Hundreds of Sheliak warships opened fire, raining plasma and missiles down on our orbital defenses. But we gave as good as we got. Jacob clenched his prosthetic fist. Our fleet was a ragtag bunch. Freighters with aftermarket guns. Shuttles loaded with mines. A few real battleships, but nothing like the Sheliak's purpose-built monstrosities. We were outgunned and outnumbered ten to one. But what we lacked in ships... We made up for in guts and skill. Our pilots flew like mad angels. They skirted the edges of Earth's gravity well, whipping around in slingshot orbits to blast the Sheliak from angles their computers couldn't predict. Jacob grinned savagely. We even rammed the bastards when our guns weren't enough. I saw a dozen fighters plow straight into a Sheliak destroyer's flank, blasting apart its missile tubes. Those magnificent lunatics sacrificed themselves to even the odds. Even with all that... The Sheliak pushed us back. Our ships burned and died, unable to match their shields and armor. We fell back to low orbit, almost in atmosphere, but the Sheliak kept coming. It looked like Earth's skies would ignite and our world would fall. Jacob paused as if steeling himself against a painful memory. That's when Captain Sarah Ivanova made her move. Her destroyer, the Indefatigable, was more wreck than ship at that point, leaking air down to a handful of missiles but she saw a gap in the enemy formation, a path through the carnage straight to Corvus's flagship, the Talon of Ruin. Jacob's voice grew even more animated as he leaned forward, eyes gleaming. So there we were, the defiant barreling toward the Talon of Ruin, Sheliak weapons hammering its failing shields, hull breaches venting atmosphere, injured crew being dragged to safety. The cadets were on the edges of their seats holding their breaths, that's when Ivanova played her ace in the hole. Her marines had captured a Sheliak engineer weeks before, and he finally cracked in interrogation. Spilled the secret to punching through their shields, an EM frequency their defenses couldn't adapt to. One that our jammers could hit even if our guns couldn't. Jacob mimed working frantically at a console. Ivanova's Comtech officer, a kid named Lee, worked like a man possessed, ripped apart the comm system, rebuilding it from scratch to pump out that Sheliak killing signal. But he needed time, and the Defiant was coming apart at the seams. The old veteran's voice dropped, letting the cadets feel the weight of that desperate moment. Ivanova ordered every gun to fire non-stop. Missiles, railguns, laser batteries, throwing out a wall of flak to keep the Sheliak off balance. All hands that could still move manned the point defences, stitching up leaks, running triage on the wounded, buying Lee the seconds he needed. Jacob spread his hands wide. The Defiant was in spitting distance now, 
so close I could see Corvus's ugly mug through the viewports, and still that monster's ship came on, spitting plasma like some demon serpent. Our shields finally cracked, and consoles exploded across the bridge. Shrapnel scythed through the CIC, and I thought we were done for. He snapped his fingers, eyes blazing. But right then Lee looked up from his jury-rigged comm station and shouted two beautiful words, Broadcast ready! Ivanova wasted no time. She punched the ignition key so hard I thought she'd break the console. Every comm dish, every antenna, even our damn running lights, all of it shrieked out that shield-breaking frequency like a banshee wail. Jacob paused, letting the moment hang. The cadets hardly dared to breathe. For a second nothing happened. The flagship loomed ahead, its weapons still hammering our crumbling hull. I thought we'd failed, that it was all for nothing. A savage grin split the veteran's face. But then, like a miracle, the talon of ruined shield sputtered and died. Energy rippled across the barriers, and they vanished, leaving the dreadnought naked as the day it was built. Jacob slammed his fist into his palm. Ivanova screamed out the order to fire, and the defiant unleashed hell. Every missile, every gun, all of it slammed into the Sheliak flagship at point-blank range. Warheads blew holes the size of hover tanks in its hull. Laser batteries sliced through decks and bulkheads like a surgeon's scalpel. The Talon of Ruin shuddered like a wounded beast, its weapons falling silent, engines flickering out. Jacob's eyes gleamed, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. Right when Corvus's ugly mug filled our screens, demanding our surrender with that torn-up, bleeding face, Ivanova spat right back. She stared that scaled demon in the eyes and said, Surrender? I don't think so. You picked the wrong species to mess with, Corvus. The cadets leaned in, hanging on Jacob's every word. The old spacer grinned, relishing the memory. We humans don't give up and we don't back down, Jacob continued, his voice rising in pitch to mimic Ivanova's fierce declaration. You want our world? Come and take it if you dare, but know this. We will fight you to the last breath and we will make you pay for every inch of ground you take. This is our home and we will defend it no matter the cost. The cadets erupted into cheers, slamming fists on tables. Jacob nodded, a fierce pride welling up in his chest. Corvus looked fit to burst, his slit pupils narrowing, teeth bared. He snarled for his fleet to crush us, to wipe humanity from the stars once and for all. But he didn't count on what Ivanova's words would do. Jacob paused, letting the tension build. The cadets leaned forward, eyes wide. Her defiance spread like wildfire, reaching every human ear in the system. Every soldier on the front lines, every civilian hunkered in bunkers. It poured fuel on the fire in our blood, made us all stand a little straighter, grip our weapons a little tighter. The old spacer clenched his metal fist, servos whirring. And it turned the damn tide. Our ships, outgunned and outmatched, started fighting like cornered rats. We formed a wall of guns and guts around Earth, a shield of steel and sheer human stubbornness that the Sheliak couldn't break. Jacob's voice rose to a fevered pitch, the cadets hanging on his every word. They threw everything they had at us, plasma, missiles, boarding pods laden with bug-eyed killers. But we held the line. We made them pay in blood for every inch, every second. Shattered ships became battering rams, crippled guns kept firing till they melted. We fought like the devil himself was at our door. The veteran paused, letting the image sink in. The room was utterly silent, every eye fixed on his scarred face. It seemed like that hellish dance would go on forever. Humanity and Sheliak locked in a death grip over Earth. Neither side able to land a killing blow, both too stubborn to die. An unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. Jacob took a shuddering breath as if stealing himself. And then, just when our ammo ran dry and our hulls were more breaches than bulkheads, Something unexpected happened, something that turned the whole damn war on its head. The cadets looked at each other uneasily as Jacob's voice dropped. Humanity's dire situation weighed heavily on their young shoulders. As Ivanova's ships raced toward the besieged colony, Jacob continued, those of us remaining at Earth dug in for the fight of our lives. The Sheliak redoubled their assault, Corvus raging at the loss of his flagship. Plasma rained down on our orbital platforms. Boarding pods smashed into our hulls. 
disgorging bug-eyed horrors thirsting for blood. Jacob's metal fist clenched, servos whining. But we held the line. Every man and woman left in Earth's defense swore to make the Sheliak pay a hundred times over for every inch of ground. We welded bulkheads shut, turned depressurized decks into killboxes. Shattered ships became ablative armor for our stations. We fought deck by deck, corridor by corridor, blood and hydraulic fluid turning zero-G into a nightmare. But we didn't give a single step. The old veteran's eyes took on a faraway look, as if reliving those desperate hours. Meanwhile Ivanova's relief fleet tore through warp, racing against time. Every soul aboard knew the stakes, millions of lives hanging in the balance. They pushed their engines to the breaking point, redlining reactors and overclocking drives. Jacob's voice was a low growl now. As they dropped out of warp at the colony, they found a scene straight out of hell. Sheliak dreadnoughts pummeling the colony's meager defenses, swarms of fighters and boarding craft choking the skies. It was a slaughter. The cadets were deathly silent, the air heavy with tension. But Ivanova's fleet didn't hesitate. They plunged into the fray like avenging angels, guns blazing. The Sheliak were caught off guard, not expecting reinforcements. Ivanova used that surprise like a scalpel, catching a destroyer with its shields down and putting a nuke straight down its throat. Jacob slammed his fist on the table, making the cadets jump. That first kill rallied the colonists. Militia and civilians alike took up arms, fighting alongside Ivanova's marines. They made the Sheliak pay for every street, every building, turned the whole damn colony into a meat grinder. The old spacer leaned back, a grim smile on his weathered face. It was a near thing. We almost lost Earth a dozen times over in those hours, and the colony was a hair's breadth from falling. But in the end, human grit and defiance carried the day. Jacob fixed the cadets with a piercing stare. Ivanova's gamble paid off. Against all odds, her fleet broke the Sheliak siege, and the Sheliak at Earth, hearing of their defeat, faltered. That moment of hesitation was all we needed. We surged forward in a final, desperate attack, throwing everything we had left at the invaders. His voice rose to a crescendo. And it was enough. The Sheliak lines shattered. Their ships broke and ran, fleeing back to their home stars with their tails between their legs. Earth and the colony were saved, but at a terrible cost. Jacob closed his eyes for a moment, as if in remembrance. We lost a lot of good people that day. Friends, family, lovers. The Defiant was reduced to a burning wreck, Ivanova just barely dragging herself out of the shattered bridge. The colony was half rubble, its surviving citizens shell-shocked and bloodied, but they were alive. Against all odds, humanity had prevailed. The old veteran opened his eyes, fixing the cadets with a gaze that seemed to bore into their souls. And that, cadets, is the lesson of the Sheliak War. When the chips are down, when all seems lost, never give up, never surrender. Humanity will always find a way to win, as long as we stand together. He leaned forward, his voice dropping to a whisper. But the story doesn't end there. Even as we licked our wounds and mourned our dead, a new challenge loomed on the horizon, one that would test our resolve like never before. Jacob took a deep pull from his water glass, the cadets waiting with bated breath as he gathered himself to continue the harrowing tale. He set the glass down with a soft clink, a grim smile on his weathered face. As Ivanova's relief fleet dropped out of warp, they were greeted by a scene straight out of a nightmare, Jacob said, his voice low and intense. Sheliak dropships swarmed the colony's surface like locusts, disgorging thousands of those slit-eyed horrors, they swept through the streets, plasma rifles spitting blue fire, cutting down anyone in their path. The cadets flinched, the brutality of the scene all too easy to imagine. But Jacob's eyes glinted with fierce pride as he went on. But those Sheliak bastards weren't expecting what came next. You see, that colony had been trading with the Vescari for years, forging bonds of friendship and mutual respect. And when the Vescari heard their human allies were in trouble, they didn't hesitate. Jacob's voice rose, a note of triumph entering his tone. 
A Vescari battle fleet dropped out of warp right on the heels of our ships, their angular silver vessels gleaming in the light of the colony's sun. They plunged into the fray without a second thought, plasma cannons blazing. The cadets let out a cheer at this unexpected turn, and Jacob grinned, swept up in the memory. Those Vescari ships were a sight to behold, let me tell you. They were smaller than the Sheliac dreadnoughts, but damn, were they fast? They danced around the enemy fleet like silver minnows, peppering the Sheliac with plasma fire, drawing their attention away from our battered ships. Jacob's metal fist clenched as he recalled the ground battle. Meanwhile, on the surface, Vescari shock troops were deploying alongside our marines, their sleek black armor a stark contrast to our olive drab. But they fought like demons, let me tell you. Those plasma rifles of theirs cut through Sheliak Keaton like a hot knife through butter. The old veteran's voice was filled with admiration as he described the Vescari's bravery. They didn't hesitate, didn't flinch in the face of those nightmare hordes. They stood shoulder to shoulder with our boys and girls, pushing the Sheliak back, block by bloody block. It was a sight to see, I tell you, humans and Vescari united against a common foe. Jacob paused, his expression turning somber. But even as we started to turn the tide on the colony, the situation back at Earth was growing dire. Ivanova and her fleet were holding on by their fingernails, but they were running on fumes. Ammo was low. Hull breaches were spreading like cracks in ice. It seemed like it was only a matter of time. The cadets leaned forward, hanging on Jacob's every word. The old spacer took a deep breath as if stealing himself. And that's when it happened. Just as it seemed like Corvus's fleet was about to sweep Ivanova aside and descend on Earth like the wrath of God, a new contact appeared on our scopes. A ship, bigger than anything we'd ever seen. It dwarfed even the Sheliak dreadnoughts, its hull as black as the void. Jacob's eyes widened, a grin spreading across his face. It was the Galactic Union, a powerful federation of alien races who'd been watching the Sheliak's aggression with growing alarm. They saw humanity's brave stand, how we risked everything to save that colony, and they decided enough was enough. The cadets gasped, leaning forward with rapt attention. Jacob nodded, his voice rising with excitement. Thousands of Galactic Union ships dropped out of warp around Earth, with the massive dreadnought unity at their head, that beast made the Sheliak ships look like toys. Jacob extended his arms wide, as if trying to encompass the ship's incredible size. The Unity's weapons were like nothing we'd ever seen. A single salvo from its main guns could vaporize a dozen Sheliak cruisers, and that's exactly what it did. His metal fist clenched, servos whirring. The Union fleet tore through the Sheliak lines like a hot knife through butter, scattering their ships like leaves in a hurricane. They cut a path straight to Corvus's flagship, the Sheliak completely outmatched. Jacob laughed, shaking his head. You should have seen Corvus's face. That scaly bastard was panicking, ordering his ships to retreat and regroup, but it was far too late. His voice dropped, taking on a note of grim satisfaction. As the unity closed in on the flagship, Captain Ivanova saw her chance. She ordered her remaining ships to form up behind the dreadnought, using its bulk for cover. Then, as one, they unleashed hell on the Sheliak flagship. And that's when Ivanova gave the order that would change the war. Jacob's eyes gleamed, his voice dropping to a near whisper. She told her comm officer to open a channel to the flagship, to Corvus himself, and when that Sheliak's ugly mug appeared on the screen, she spoke three words that would go down in history. The old veteran grinned fiercely, his voice ringing out, Corvus, surrender now! The cadets erupted in cheers, slamming fists on the table. Jacob let them celebrate for a moment before raising a hand for silence. Oh, that snake resisted at first, spitting and hissing. But Ivanova held firm. She made it clear, surrender or be destroyed. The choice was his. Jacob leaned back, crossing his arms over his chest. And what choice did he have, really? His ship was crippled, his fleet in ruins, and the full might of the Galactic Union loomed over him. Even Corvus could see there was no way out. The old spacer smiled grimly. So with the whole human fleet and half the galaxy watching, Corvus, supreme commander of the Sheliak Dominion, 
surrendered unconditionally to a lowly human. He agreed to withdraw all his forces, to pay reparations, to never again threaten humanity or its allies. Jacob sighed, as if a great weight had been lifted from his shoulders. And just like that it was over. A hundred years of fear, of fighting, of wondering if each day would be our last. All ended with a few words from a small woman in a beat-up ship. That day taught us something important, that for all our differences, for all the vastness of space, there's one thing that unites us, one thing that's stronger than any weapon, any ship, any empire. Jacob's voice was soft now, but it carried an immense weight. Unity, standing together, fighting for each other, even when all seems lost. That's what defeated the Sheliak. That's what will see us through any challenge the universe throws at us. He smiled, leaning forward. And that, cadets, is the true lesson of the Sheliak War. In unity there is strength, in courage there is hope, and in the human spirit there is a light that can never be extinguished. The old veteran straightened, his metal arm gleaming under the lights. We thought it was over then, that we'd won the greatest victory in human history and could now live in peace. But the universe had one more surprise in store for us, one that would test our newfound unity like never before. Because even as we celebrated, even as we began to rebuild what had been lost, we didn't know that the real threat was yet to come. Jacob's eyes narrowed, his voice dropping to a growl. We didn't know about them, the ones who had been watching from the shadows all along, biding their time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike, the ones who would make the Sheliak seem like a minor nuisance in comparison. He leaned forward, his face cast in shadow, his eyes glinting in the darkness. The void wraiths were coming and we were. Jacob's eyes gleamed with fierce pride as he recounted Ivanova's daring plan. She knew capturing Corvus was the key to breaking the Sheliak's will. Cut off the serpent's head and the body dies. The old veteran leaned forward, his voice low and intense. Ivanova assembled a boarding party of her finest, battle-hardened marines who'd follow her into the jaws of hell itself, led by Lieutenant Marcus Reeves, a man I'd trust at my back any day. Jacob nodded at the murmurs of surprise from the wide-eyed cadets. They knew boarding a Sheliak ship was akin to suicide. It was a desperate play, but those are the only kind that win wars like this. Ivanova knew, if we could seize their flagship and take Corvus alive, the Sheliak fleet would fracture. The old spacer's voice dripped with admiration. They fought like demons, clearing corridor after gorse-licked corridor with flamer and frag grenade. No mercy given, none expected. Not after what the Sheliak did to our colonies. Jacob's gaze unfocused, as if seeing the carnage play out in his mind's eye. Reeves fought at the forefront, a shotgun in one hand and a pistol in the other. Any Sheliak that crossed his path met a swift, bloody end, the cadets flinched at the brutality, but Jacob continued undaunted. They pushed deeper into the flagship, overcoming fanatic resistance at every turn. The Sheliak crew fought with the desperation of cornered rats, knowing the price of failure, but Reeves's marines were implacable. Jacob slammed his fist into his palm. Deck by deck they battled their way to the bridge. Reeves breached the final blast doors with a debt charge that shook the whole damn ship. And there, standing amid the smoke and ruin, was Corvus himself. The cadets inhaled sharply. Jacob grinned, cold and fierce. That scaled bastard had led his kind to butcher millions of innocents, turned our colonies into ash and bone. And now, seeing his flagship overrun and his fleet in ruins, he still had the gall to sneer. Jacob shook his head. Reeves didn't waste time with words. He launched himself at Corvus, pistol-barking, the two grappled like titans, smashing consoles and bulkheads as they traded blows. The old veteran mimed a vicious uppercut. Reeves took a few hits, but he gave far worse than he got. Corvus might have been bred for war, but Reeves had something stronger than bioengineering in his corner. He had the unbreakable human spirit, the will to fight to the last breath for what he believed in. Jacob leaned back, a savage gleam in his eye. In the end, that's what made the difference. Reeves pummeled that scaled freak into submission, beating him bloody until he couldn't throw another punch. 
Then he dragged Corvus to the viewscreen by his neck and forced him to his knees in front of the camera. A vicious smile split Jacob's face. The look in Corvus's eyes when Reeves put a gun to his head and demanded the Sheliac's unconditional surrender. I'll treasure that sight for the rest of my days. Because it was the look of a tyrant realizing he'd finally met his better. The cadets erupted into cheers, slamming fists on tables. Jacob let them celebrate for a moment before raising a hand for silence. With Corvus captured and the flagship under our control, the Sheliac fleet fell to pieces. Some tried to run, others fought among themselves like scavengers over a carcass. But the Galactic Union and our own fleet gave them no quarter. Jacob's voice rang with triumph. We harried them across a dozen systems, running down every last ship and blasting them to atoms. Those that surrendered were given the same mercy they showed our civilians, a swift trip to hell. The old veteran sighed, the weight of memory heavy on his shoulders. When the last Sheliac cruiser was nothing more than an expanding ball of plasma, we finally dared to believe it was over. Earth was safe, the colonies were liberated, mankind had looked extinction in the eye and spat in its face. Jacob met the cadet's gazes, his expression somber. But the cost, Ica, God, the cost. Millions dead, entire worlds left in ruin. We'd won, but the scars ran deep. It would take decades to rebuild what the Sheliac tore down in mere months. The old spacer shook his head. Still, we had hope. The Galactic Union pledged their support, vowing to help us recover and grow stronger than ever. The Vescari blessed their hearts, proved friends through and through. They shared their technology, their resources, even welcomed human settlers on their worlds. A wistful smile touched Jacob's lips. For a time it seemed like a new dawn for mankind, a chance to heal, to build a better future in partnership with the species who stood by us through thick and thin. But then the old veteran's face darkened, his eyes haunted. If only we'd known then what lurked on the horizon. If only we'd had an inkling of the nightmares that slithered in the void, waiting for their chance to strike. Maybe, maybe we could have been ready. Jacob's voice dropped to a whisper, cold dread etched in every word. But we didn't know, couldn't know. And so, like lambs to the slaughter, we let down our guard and dared to dream of peace. All the while the void wraiths watched and hungered. And when they came... When they fell upon us like the wrath of an angry guard, we learned the true meaning of hopelessness. The cadets shuddered, a chill racing down their spines at the ominous words. Jacob looked at each of them in turn, his gaze heavy with the weight of what was to come. But that, cadets, is a story for another time, because before we speak of the void wraiths and the horrors they unleashed, you need to understand the calm before the storm— the brief shining moment when we foolishly thought the worst was behind us. Jacob took a long pull from his water glass, gathering his thoughts. The cadets waited with bated breath, both dreading and desperate to hear the rest of the tale. The old veteran set down his glass, a humorless smile touching his lips. It all started with a distress call from the edge of Union space, a simple innocuous thing, or so we thought, Little did we know, it was the first herald of our doom, the first sign that something ancient and unspeakably evil had awoken in the abyss. The old veteran paused, letting the weight of the Sheliac's defeat sink in. The cadets murmured amongst themselves, awed by the magnitude of the victory. Jacob cleared his throat and continued. But the work was far from over. With the Sheliac threat ended, we turned our attention to securing a lasting peace. Jacob's metal fist clenched, servos whirring. The captured Sheliac leadership, including that snake Corvus, were put on trial for their crimes against sentient life. The cadets leaned forward, hanging on Jacob's every word. The trials were broadcast across the galaxy, a message to all that such atrocities would not go unpunished. Species from a hundred worlds tuned in, bearing witness. Jacob's voice was grim his eyes distant. The evidence was damning. Corvus and his lieutenants had ordered the slaughter of entire colonies, the enslavement of billions. A heavy silence hung in the room. The cadets looked at each other, the enormity of the Sheliac's crimes sinking in. 
In the end, the verdict was unanimous, guilty on all counts. Jacob's voice was heavy with satisfaction. Corvus and his inner circle were sentenced to life imprisonment on a remote, heavily guarded world, a fitting fate for those who sought to extinguish the light of freedom. The cadets nodded, a sense of justice served. But even with the Sheliak defeated, we knew the galaxy was still a dangerous place. Other threats lurked in the void, waiting for their chance. Jacob's voice took on a determined edge. So, we set to work, building up our defences, forging stronger alliances. We worked hand in hand with the Viscari, the Galactic Union, and a dozen other species, shared our tech, our tactics, our hard-won wisdom. A note of pride entered Jacob's voice. Together, we created a network of early warning systems, rapid response fleets, ready to counter any threat. And the crown jewel of this new defense force? A new kind of ship, one that blended the best of human, Viscari, and Union engineering. Jacob's eyes sparkled with enthusiasm. Sleek, powerful, and bristling with the most advanced weapons the galaxy had ever seen. These ships became the backbone of our united fleet, a symbol of our shared resolve. The cadets buzzed with excitement, the prospect of serving on such vessels filling their minds. It was a new dawn for the galaxy, a chance to build a lasting peace to explore and grow as one. Jacob's voice grew softer, more reflective, and it all started with the courage and sacrifice of a few brave souls, humans who stared down annihilation and refused to blink. The old spacer fixed the cadets with a piercing gaze, his words ringing with conviction. Never forget that, cadets. In the face of overwhelming odds, when all seems lost, it's the strength of the human spirit that carries the day. That unbreakable will to fight, to endure, to stand for something greater than ourselves. Jacob leaned forward, his voice dropping to a whisper. And as we stood on the cusp of this new era, united and strong, that's when we first heard the rumors, whispers of something ancient and terrible stirring in the depths of space, a threat that would make the Sheliak seem like a bad dream. The old veteran's eyes glinted with a mix of fear and determination. The void wraiths were coming, and we had no idea the horror they would unleash, but that, cadets, is a story for another day. Jacob sat back, his expression grim as an uneasy silence filled the room. The cadets glanced at each other, a chill running down their spines at the ominous words. The battle against the Sheliak had been won, but it seemed that the real fight was just beginning. Jacob's voice grew heavy with the weight of memory as he recounted the bittersweet aftermath of humanity's victory. The cadets sat in rapt silence, their young faces etched with a mix of awe and sorrow as they absorbed the old veteran's words. We had won, but the price was high, so damn high. Jacob's eyes glistened with unshed tears. Countless brave souls gave their lives so that we could have a future. They fought and died for every man, woman, and child in the galaxy, and we knew their sacrifice would never be forgotten. The old spacer's gaze grew distant, his mind transported back to those fateful moments. Captain Ivanova. She was the bravest of us all. In the heat of the final battle, as she led the charge against the Sheliak flagship, her ship took a direct hit. The damage was catastrophic, the hull breached in a dozen places. Jacob's voice wavered, the pain of the memory still raw after all these years. But even as her ship fell apart around her, Ivanova refused to abandon her post. With the last of her strength, she made sure her crew made it to the escape pods. Every last one of them. A single tear rolled down Jacob's weathered cheek. But for her there was no escape. She stayed on the bridge, fighting to the very end, buying her people the time they needed to get to safety. And when the end came, when her ship finally broke apart in a ball of fire and shrapnel, we all felt it. It was like a light going out in the galaxy, a star winking out of existence. Her sacrifice and the sacrifices of so many others, they weren't in vain. They gave us a chance at a new beginning, a chance to build something better. Jacob's voice regained some of its strength, a flicker of hope amidst the sorrow. And we took that chance. We forged new alliances, 
shared our knowledge and our strength with the other races of the galaxy. Together we started to heal, to rebuild what had been lost. But even as he spoke of hope, Jacob's expression darkened once more. But we soon learned that our triumph was not as complete as we thought. In the years that followed, as we pieced together the scattered remnants of the Sheliak's records, a disturbing truth came to light. The old veteran leaned forward, his voice dropping to a grave whisper. The Sheliak, for all their cruelty and aggression, were not the true masterminds of the war. They were but pawns, manipulated by a far greater power lurking in the shadows. Jacob's eyes took on a haunted look, as if he were peering into an abyss. An ancient race, one whose name was spoken only in fearful whispers, the Void Wraiths. They had been pulling the strings all along, using the Sheliak as a tool to weaken and divide the younger races of the galaxy. The cadets exchanged uneasy glances, a chill running down their spines at the mention of this new unknown threat. Jacob saw their fear, and his expression hardened with resolve. We had won a battle, but the war, the true war, was just beginning. The Void Wraiths were unlike any foe we had faced before, their technology and abilities so far beyond our own that it defied comprehension. Jacob's metal fist clenched, the servos whirring with the strength of his conviction, but we knew we couldn't back down. We couldn't let the sacrifices of our fallen be in vain. For the sake of every living being in the galaxy, we would have to find a way to stand against this new darkness. As Jacob fell silent, the weight of his words hung in the air. The cadets looked at each other, a newfound sense of purpose and determination burning in their eyes. They knew that they were the inheritors of a legacy, a proud tradition of courage and defiance in the face of impossible odds. And as they sat there, absorbing the lessons of the past, they silently vowed to carry that legacy forward to meet whatever challenges the future might bring with the same indomitable spirit that had carried humanity through its darkest hour. For they knew, as Jacob knew, that the price of freedom was eternal vigilance and that the battle for the galaxy's soul was one that would never truly end. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.